Why am I getting press releases for perfume and sex toys in Spanish? Who signed me up for this stuff? For that matter, is this game porn or not? Either way, this is, this is, this is not where I want to be. Things are getting weird in my inbox, you guys, and I don't know if it's a good idea letting any sludge spill over. Every six months, I release some of the pressure after letting it bottle up so I can separate what's worth talking about from what's worth, um, keeping to myself. I mean, we here at Bunny Hop care about quality, and that's why I played 16 different games for my inbox that I've never heard of, so that I can give some love and exposure to Turmoil. Having the opportunity to talk about a game like Turmoil is why I like doing this series so much. It's a novel idea, a gamification of the economic forces at play that determined how the West was won, and a great companion piece to any viewing of There Will Be Blood. You're one of four enterprising oil barons who will bid on the land and tear it up in search of black gold. Managing plots of drills, silos, and wagon routes, earning you capital that you'll spend on equipment upgrades, loan interest, and the never-ending urge to buy more and more land. All to the tunes of an adventurous and western-flavored acoustic guitar. But with that being said, I don't think Turmoil is a particularly good game. It sports the critical flaw of simply having not enough for the player to do. Oftentimes, there's just not enough variables and mechanics to throw around to keep you doing much other than waiting and seeing which company you should be selling to. Left company or right company. Whichever has the higher number wins. It's real basic, incredibly basic, cripplingly basic decisions like that that betray the good strategy game Turmoil could be. But that doesn't stop it from being an interesting game. And if you know much about my preferences of game, you should probably know that I oftentimes get more kicks out of interesting games than mechanically polished ones. Turmoil covers a setting and struggle that you're not likely to find anywhere else outside of the one free Flash game from 2008 that clearly inspired it. Okay, first of all, kudos on the logo. Hearing and seeing whatever the hell just happened only makes me want to know what's next. What's next is the opposite of upscaling inspiration from free Flash game. It is the downscaling of inspiration from expensive AAA games. Wasted. A post-apocalyptic pub crawler is 30% Fallout 3. It has an interface so diligently riffing on Bethesda's take on Interplay's apocalypse that they're even emulating how your dude's stomach rumbles when you think of going on a new quest. You can see him. Hate to break it to you, but you've just wandered your way into becoming the new boy's first big score. Wasted has you running dungeons and Fallout's interface that are procedurally generated in a roguelite's image. Things move a hell of a lot faster than Fallout, and your inventory is a hell of a lot smaller than Fallout because you're racing against an overpowered enemy who spawns in and stalks you on a timer, just like the ghost in Spelunky. You got your average lineup of upgrades and shortcut diggers unlocking the deeper your one life guy can get into the vaults, all very standard stuff, but the one thing that makes this romp a bit more satisfying to me is just seeing this stuff happen from the first person perspective. Mechanics here are a hell of a lot more involved than they are in Heavy Bullet, which is the only other example I can easily think of that happening with. Plus, as derivative as its style may be, hey, at least it's got personality. How many other games have cameos of Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger show up? Two heads are better than one. Discounting of course moments nocturnal when a man seeks to relive certain urges. Getting to talk about games like Fossil Echo is the second reason I love doing this series. Because unlike with Turmoil, the jobs the devs did with Fossil Echo was just damn good game making. I have no clue why this game didn't get more publicity, but I do have a couple hunches. So okay, turns out I heard from my friend Matt Visual that Fossil Echo did have a booth at Momocon here in Atlanta back in May. And when I was doing the rounds of indie games, I skipped it because of this section right here. A good chunk of their trailer was a tiny little bit of gameplay that ends up just making it look like one of the increasing amounts of Limbo ripoffs that are floating around. But don't judge a book by its cover, right? Actually, the Limbo comparison here isn't too far off, but Fossil Echo's puzzle platforming is a good deal more mechanically taxing, technical and less trial and error, with a story that's a hell of a lot easier to describe. But it has absolutely stellar presentation, top quality 2D art and animation that is paced well with the level design to have that goosebumps per minute ratio reaching record highs. This is a level of aesthetic polish of 2D art that I don't think I've seen outside of super giant games. They're pulling off things like depth of field and lens flares and camera dust particles on top of beautifully tweened animations and probably the one and only case of fake film grain that I like. 
So based on the peaks of the bit that I played, I can't imagine the rest of it not being worth it unless it was like a, a JPEG of someone's butt or something. So I'm wondering why I never really heard much about this game. Maybe it's the price point or maybe it's... Oh, that's why. I guess when your minimum standard of excellence is this high, you can't keep it going for too long. The game's on sale for about $7.50 right now, so if you can afford to spend $7.50 consequence free, I'd totally recommend giving this one at least a chance. A press release bragging about a 600-track soundtrack featuring Jimmy Urine and DJ Cutman had me rushing to try this one out, and I am glad I did. The Metronomicon is a rhythm game with a rock-paper-scissors combat system about tapping your fingers to the beat of the music while also remembering the basics of RPG. You gotta juggle some simple rules about what beats what in a traditional role-playing system to add a layer of depth on top of your dance. Switching to different tracks and notes can have you choosing which elemental spells to tap out, in between switches to tanks who lure and stun enemies to healers who keep the entire party afloat, all while passive bonuses are dealt out as rewards for good performance. Managing a light layer of strategy on top of the beat rhythm button mashing was just the extra layer of depth I needed compared to what typically keeps me from playing most music games without a dance pad. But that's kind of hard to do when the elemental alignment of your enemy is an icon all the way over here, and your eyes are going to be focused on these prompts over here. But that's okay, because the music is excellent, and the idea is excellent, and that's what it takes to impress me when I'm scrolling through my inbox. I got one press release for this game and one friend who swears by it. This is a game of purest minimalism, about conquering the unconquerable and controlling the uncontrollable. You have no story, no cutscenes, no backdrop, not even any textures. Just a blank white course for you to slide a car around with the brakes permanently turned on. There's so much finesse in every frame of movement that footage of someone who actually knows what they're doing is going to look like an entirely different game than what I'm managing here. And I still care enough to retry the same damn challenge over and over again because getting it right feels amazing. And that was the very first challenge room in the game! Outside of those rooms is somewhat of an overworld, speckled with little bonus challenges and collectibles, all of which require interesting driving to reach. At its best, the game is nothing more and nothing less than a gratifying celebration of skill and mastery. And at its worst, it's a waste of a lot of perfectly good rubber. Right now, Dad Quest has, like, no level design. It's just a demo for right now, but I'm hoping these levels are just prototype stages for a system and a sense of humor that I could really end up digging after it gets more development. You fling your kid around like a boomerang who inflicts swappable extra damage effects. You're a dad, you're on a quest, and everyone talks about what a horrible monster you are, so it's pretty much the same thing as The Last of Us. Plus, there's a healthy degree of customization and personalization to be had to suit your individual play style. Watch as I customize my avatar's attributions using a creative and innovative set of player-motivated tools. Yay! 